You ever floor the gas and your car barely moves? A guy came into my shop last week, thought his engine was done for. The dealership quoted him $1,200 just to diagnose it. You know what fixed it? A $5 air filter and a dirty MAF sensor. Sprayed it, swapped it, car ran like new. And this happens way more than you think. Power loss freaks people out, they start replacing transmissions, fuel pumps, even ECUs, when it's usually something simple. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the real checklist, air, fuel, spark, and exhaust, step by step. Basic tools, no guesswork, just smart fixes that actually work. And yeah, even Slash Gear confirms a dirty mass air flow sensor can wreck acceleration and fuel economy. Just cleaning it can bring your car back to life. A. I've been fixing cars for over 15 years, and power loss is one of the most overblown, misdiagnosed issues out there. But if you follow this process, it's one of the easiest to fix. So hit that subscribe button, and let's get your power back, garage style. Alright, let's break this down. First stop on the power loss checklist, air. Because if your engine can't breathe, it sure as hell can't run. Step 1. Check the air intake system. One time, I had a Civic come in that couldn't get out of its own way, barely any acceleration, rough idle, and a weird stumble every time the driver hit the throttle. Thought it was a misfire or bad fuel pump. Nope, just a clogged air filter packed with leaves, dust, and a dead wasp. That tiny bit of debris was choking the airflow, messing up the fuel ratio, and killing the engine's power. I popped in a $12 filter and the car ran smooth as butter. Cheap, easy, and total beginner-level DIY fix. If your ride feels sluggish, this is the first thing to check always. Pull out the filter, inspect it in daylight. Can't see light through it? Toss it. While you're in there, grab some Mass Air F sensor cleaner and give that thing a bath, especially if your car's been hesitating or throwing rich codes. A dirty MAF can throw off your throttle response, mess with fuel delivery, and make your car act like it needs a full tune-up when all it needs is a quick spray. Ever skipped this basic maintenance and made a wrong guess that cost you? Don't be that guy. Fix the intake first, it might be all you need to restore your power. But let's say the air's good, no clogs, clean MAF, and the car still feels gutless. Next, we look at fuel. Because power means nothing without proper delivery. Step 2. Check the fuel delivery system. A couple weeks ago, I had a guy swear his car was haunted, it would bog down every time he hit the throttle, no check engine light, no misfire, just a weird hesitation and total loss of power. Turns out the fuel pump was slowly dying, couldn't keep pressure up when the engine needed it most. I hooked up a gauge, and the numbers were way below spec. A weak pump or clogged fuel filter can totally mess with fuel delivery, and your engine ends up starving under load, like trying to sprint while breathing through a straw. If your car runs fine at idle but stumbles when accelerating or struggles at higher RPMs, check your fuel system. A dirty fuel filter, weak fuel pump, or clogged injector, especially on direct injection engines, can wreck your performance and drive you nuts chasing the wrong fix. Ever pulled a plug and it looked fine, but the spray pattern was junk? Happens all the time. You can test pressure at the fuel rail, or start simple and just replace that old filter. Most of this is totally DIY, and way cheaper than paying a mechanic to guess. Wanna know the best way to tell if your injectors are leaking or dirty? I'll show you in the next step. Now, even if your fuel system's solid, there's one more thing that can totally kill performance, bad spark. Time to check the fire. Step 3, check spark and combustion. I had a Chevy in the bay last month, customer said it ran fine, until it didn't. Sudden hesitation, jerky acceleration, and a gnarly rough idle that shook the whole car. No codes at first, then boom a P0300 misfire code popped up. Pulled the spark plugs and they looked like they'd been in there since the stone age. One ignition coil was arcing to the block, and the plug gap was way off. A fresh set of plugs and a new coil pack later, the engine purred like a kitten on caffeine. If you're right sputtering, stumbling, or just not firing clean, you've got to check your ignition system. 
A weak spark, bad coil, or just a dirty plug can throw off combustion entirely, leading to power loss, poor performance, or worse, long-term engine damage. Scan for codes, test for spark, and always double-check your firing order if you've been messing around under the hood. I've seen people chase fuel problems for days when it was just one cylinder not getting proper fire. Don't be that guy. Ever changed plugs and felt your car go from meta woe in one drive? Still bogging down? Then maybe your engine's trying to exhale through a straw. Let's talk exhaust, because a clogged cat can choke your power fast. By the way, if this kind of no-nonsense car advice is helping you out, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you're into fixing stuff the right way without wasting money, subscribe to the channel. I drop videos like this every week real-world mechanic tips that actually work, no dealership BS. Plus, if you drop a comment, I usually reply, I've been under the hood for years and I've seen it all. Step 4. Look at the exhaust system. Last year, I had a customer who thought his engine was dying, car was bogging, hesitating, barely getting up hills. No misfire, no fuel issues. But man, the exhaust stunk like rotten eggs. We ran a simple back pressure test with a gauge on the O2 bung and boom, nearly double what it should have been. Turned out, the catalytic converter had melted inside. It was so clogged, the engine was basically trying to breathe through a sock. Replaced it, and the car's throttle response came back like magic. When your exhaust flow is restricted, it throws everything off fuel trims, air fuel ratio, even how your O2 sensors talk to the ECU. You'll get weird symptoms like sputtering, power loss, or rich slash lean conditions without obvious clues. A bad oxygen sensor can make the engine dump too much or too little fuel, killing performance. If you're seeing a P0420 code, bad smell, or just poor acceleration, don't ignore it. Wanna know if your cat's choked without fancy tools? I'll show you a garage trick using a coat hanger and a glove. Ever seen a $900 part nearly explode from a $2 fuel problem? Now here's the kicker, sometimes it's none of the usual suspects. You fix the basics, and it still runs like junk. That's when we dig into the sneaky stuff nobody tells you about. Bonus, overlooked causes. You ever chase down every obvious fix, plugs, coils, filters and your car still runs like garbage? I had a guy once dump $600 on random parts, only to find out it was a flaky TPS throttle position sensor. It was sending the wrong signal, telling the ECU he was barely touching the throttle when he was flooring it. The car felt boggy, had random hesitation, and almost stalled on hills. Swapped in a new TPS, and boom power restored. One little sensor throwing everything out of sync. And don't sleep on crankshaft or camshaft sensors, if they're out of phase or sending bad timing info, your engine can misfire, run rough, or act like it's drunk. Add in low compression on one cylinder, and you've got the perfect storm of confusion. Not to mention bad fuel quality, I've seen engines ping and knock from contaminated gas that smell like nail polish remover. These are the deep, overlooked issues that leave DIYers scratching their heads. Ever spent weeks chasing a misfire that turned out to be a timing issue? Yeah, been there. Diagnostic flow and troubleshooting order. Look, if you're trying to diagnose a power loss issue by throwing parts at it, you're wasting money. Start smart, grab an OBD2 scanner and pull any stored codes, even if there's no check engine light on. I had a guy swear there were no issues, plug in the scanner, bam, a stored lean code pointing straight to a bad MAF sensor. The key is having a checklist and going in step by step, check air first, then fuel, then spark, and finally exhaust. That flowchart in your head is what separates the backyard guessers from the folks who fix it right the first time. Here's how I think about it, no throttle response? Check airflow, filter, sensor, maybe a vacuum leak. Got spark but it's still stumbling? Time to test fuel pressure or inspect injectors. Still acting up? Maybe it's an ignition coil, or you've got back pressure from a clogged cat. Don't go straight to replacing the plugs or tearing apart your engine. A good troubleshooting process is like a GPS, it won't drive for you, but it sure keeps you from getting lost. Ever fixed a car in 20 minutes just because you followed a good diagnostic flow? 
But here's the deal, not every problem is DIY territory. If you followed the checklist and still can't crack it, this is when to step back and call in the pros. Final advice, when to see a mechanic. Look, I'm all for DIY, I've shown you how to clean sensors, check filters, and even run basic scans. But there's a point where a job crosses from Saturday garage work to full-on pro diagnostics. I had a guy chasing a misfire for a month, changed plugs, coils, fuel filter, still ran like junk. One compression test later? Boom, low compression on cylinder 3. That's not a part swap, that's pulling the head and checking valves. If you're not equipped with a gauge or don't want to risk tearing things down wrong, it's time to call a mechanic. Anytime you're facing stuff like a fuel pressure check, crank no start, or deep internal engine trouble, that's when DIY hits its limits. If you're not comfortable testing timing, checking for a head gasket leak, or reading advanced scan data, don't guess and cause damage. Be smart. There's no shame in handing it over when the problem's beyond a simple fix. Trust me, a $100 shop inspection beats a $2,000 repair from a bad DIY call. Ever try fixing something simple and ended up with a bigger mess? Final takeaway. So look, if your car's feeling weak, bogging down, or just straight up refusing to move when you hit the gas, don't panic and start replacing everything. Follow the checklist, air, fuel, spark, exhaust. Most power loss problems are something simple, a dirty sensor, a clogged filter, a weak spark, not some massive engine failure. But you've got to diagnose smart, not just throw parts. And hey, if you hit a wall or start seeing deeper issues like low compression or timing problems, there's no shame in calling in a pro. A hundred bucks at the shop can save you thousands in wrong guesses. If this video helped, smash the like, drop a comment about what fixed your power issue, and don't forget to subscribe, more real-world fix-it videos coming soon. Keep your tools clean, and I'll catch you in the next one.